And now, from Harlem News Hourly, a special feature. These grisly images represent some of the sights seen in the war in Afghanistan. At first, the war gained much support, but over time, U.S. support for the war quickly declined due to high casualties and lack of resources. The Trade Centers in the Pentagon on September 11, 2001 sparked the initial motivation for the war in Afghanistan. However, the roots of the war can be traced back all the way to 1978 when the Soviet Union sent troops into Afghanistan to take control of the weak government. Seeing this as an opportunity to weaken Soviet power, the U.S. secretly provided weapons and even training to resistant fighters known as the Mujahideen. The Mujahideen, a group that was committed to destroying the Soviets and returning Afghanistan to an Islamic state. Among this group was the Taliban, a group that followed a particularly strict form of Islam that completely rejected Western and secular values. After about 10 years of intense fighting, the Mujahideen came out victorious. The Soviets had been defeated. Despite this, the country was weakened by this warfare, and Mujahideen factions fought against each other to gain control of the government. In 1994, the Taliban emerged as more of an organized group among the Taliban. By 1996, they had already controlled Afghanistan's capital, and by 2000, the Taliban had controlled all of Afghanistan. At first, the Taliban was welcomed by the people of Afghanistan, but the Taliban followed a strict form of Islam. They imposed harsh laws, such as women being forced to cover every square inch of their bodies with clothing and punishments, including amputations and executions. At first, the Taliban was not much of a threat to U.S. national security. So, what caused the U.S. to invade Afghanistan? The Jihad, or Holy Struggle, caused inspired men to bring Jihad to other parts of the world. Among these men were, of course, Osama bin Laden, who planned attacks on U.S. soil. September 11th, 2001, a day which will live in infamy. After the Taliban refused to hand Osama bin Laden over to the U.S. government, President Bush was forced to make a big decision, a decision that is still having an effect on civilians and military personnel today. Finally, President Bush ordered coalition forces to invade Afghanistan with two objectives, to hunt down bin Laden and to remove the Taliban from power. Within a year of the invasion, U.S. troops, along with Taliban opposition groups, were able to overthrow the Taliban government and defeat them. Because of this, the U.S. was able to focus more of its attention on the war in Iraq, which was becoming increasingly difficult. Only a small group of U.S. troops were kept in Afghanistan. The problem was that the U.S. allowed Taliban forces to regroup because of financial support from the opium trade. The Taliban was able to get their hands on a lot of opium, considering it was a plant that was grown in Asia. Luckily for them, the drug was very profitable. Since then, the Taliban were able to become more powerful than ever. At this point, there are basically two sides of the war. One saying that the U.S. and other coalition ought to keep troops in Afghanistan until the Taliban is defeated. And the other side saying that the economic and physical cost of the war are too great for coalition forces to still have a presence in the country. Among these men was Jean-Jacques Rousseau. So had quite the character. He didn't have a fun and normal childhood, and he didn't have a supportive loving family, and he was persecuted in his life uh, for lots of his beliefs. 
Uh, yet through all of this, he emerged as a prominent 18th century Enlightenment thinker. Rousseau was born on June 28, 1712, and was forced to serve as an apprentice to a brutal engraver who didn't treat him very well. As an adult, Rousseau moved to Paris, where he engaged in a life of music and philosophy. Uh, Rousseau saw humanity in a very bright light. Uh, Rousseau's interpretation of man was that man was uh, born good, independent, and even compassionate. Uh, because of this, he thought that if man were to live on a deserted island with nothing but each other, they would live happily and peacefully. Uh, so he believed in a uh, direct democracy. Uh, this form of government was run on the basis of simple majority vote uh, by the adult male citizens to enact laws. Uh, his government did not include any rulers or dictators to oppress the people. It would be sustained on the basis that uh, people uh, would be inclined to vote on votes together peacefully. Rousseau even insisted that the source of sovereignty is always the people, not a government. Uh, because Rousseau believed that governments corrupt people, the people had a right to, repla uh, to replace it if the government acted contrary to their will. In relation to the recent events that have occurred in Afghanistan, I, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, have declared that the United States of America should start a complete extraction of U.S. forces in Afghanistan because the U.S. needs to focus more attention on domestic affairs in the U.S. itself. The U.S. is already walking on the path to permanent warfare and Afghanistan cannot afford the destruction that has occurred in the country from war. With all this talk of the Afghan war, one may wonder what Rousseau would say about the whole situation. Uh, while the public tends to be much more concerned with uh, domestic issues, both the democ uh, democratic and republican foreign policy establishments tend to be more internationalist, focusing on the world's affairs and how these affairs relate to the safety of one's country. Rousseau wanted governments to act in a way according to the people. Uh, with the declining support of the war, Rousseau would uh, believe that the government ought to act according to the U.S. people will and withdraw troops from Afghanistan. Instead, Rousseau would have the U.S. government focus on domestic issues such as improving education and lowering the national debt. Since the start of the war in 2001, over 3,300 coalition deaths have occurred in Afghanistan. The war was originally fought to remove the Taliban from power in Afghanistan and to find the perpetrator of the 9-11 attacks, Osama bin Laden. However, these have both been successfully completed, yet the United States still has a military presence in Afghanistan. Many people wonder whether or not resources for the war will run out. The job, uh, the job is just too big because there isn't enough money circulating in the government. There isn't enough troops as well. Many American citizens are afraid that the Afghan war has been placed under imaginary set of laws called the Washington Rules. One of these rules states that the U.S. should act as global policemen, keeping order in all unstable countries that, according to some, impose a direct threat to the U.S. and its people. Uh, Rousseau, in this case, would say that the people of a country are first priority. Uh, this war is unfair to soldiers who are fighting it. It's unfair to the Afghan people who are endangered every single day. And it's unfair to the American citizens who rely on the government to, to help them. Uh, this help may come from welfare and a strong education system, but without the government focusing on these issues, uh, this help will never come. Thank you for watching my documentary on Rousseau and the Afghan War. My name is Brennan Powell with Harlem News Hourly, signing off.